Hi friends, Joseph Anthony here. And uh, I decided to do a part two of this solar eclipse uh, event that's taking place. And I've titled this one Strange Events because I'm seeing some really interesting stuff taking place. And I'm wondering, you know, what could possibly happen here? And so I've put together a bunch of uh, slides that I think you might find interesting. Uh, also, towards the end of the video, I put together the astrology and I wanted to show you a little bit more in depth about just the next couple of we a uh, couple of days excuse me a couple of days heading up to this eclipse and how important it is as i'm doing this video today on okay um mercury is in retrograde so if you understand what mercury retrograde is it's the mercury the planet has fallen behind the earth from our vantage point and so it's behind us which is in a sort of a weakened state so it could be confusing it could be strange uh it could be telecommunication issues stuff like that misunderstandings all of that stuff plays into a mercury retrograde but I wanted to just do a part two because I'm seeing so much chatter online and I, I'm glad that people are starting to connect the dots. That's great. But uh, a lot of stuff is really weird and strange and it's almost like there's an anticipation for something uh, to occur here. And we all know that this is a big event worldwide. Everyone's watching it, as I've said. So let's dive in a little deeper and I want to show you what I'm talking about here. Um, as you know, I did the last video. This was the part one uh, video. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link down below or just go uh, YouTube it. But I talked about how this eclipse is going to run right over this part of the United States. Very important. And there's a lot of activity already brewing right along here. Everyone, you know, wanting to see the eclipse and so on. So, um, and I totally understand when, you know, when you have some something that strong and powerful going over a country, you want to kind of witness it. I understand perfectly. Uh, but also at the same time, we have, you know, thousands of illegals crossing the border. I mean, that's pretty weird in itself. Uh, also, we also have redacted. It came out with a great video here showing that, the you know, these charities, these Catholic charities are funding a lot of this immigration coming over. Uh, and I've shown this in other videos. I'm not the only one. So, you know, I've always known that the church is not what it pretends to be. Uh, it's part of the control mechanism on this planet, unfortunately. So all religion is, in my opinion, because I've gone down that rabbit hole and I've connected the dots. But this is a wonderful video if you want to watch a little bit more. And I left the link down below. Uh, of course, we had the Russian attack. We had the P. Diddy nonsense going on. And that seems to be heating up on the forums as well. I talked about that. We just have this strange comet coming in, you know, right around the same time. Boy, I tell you, lots of activity, lots of activity. Uh, also, we have this National Guard being deployed uh, along that route. I know Indiana has called their National Guard up, uh, in, in Niagara Falls, uh, I think down in Texas they're doing the same. So there's a, they're preparing for these, this onslaught of people, and there's going to be tons of them all along this path. You know, some people that are not from the state, and so it might be overwhelming their system. So I totally get what they're doing there. But again, it's very suspicious, you know. Um, also here on Zero Hedge, they, they also talk about it. I left that link down below. You could watch that. We also had, of course, that this fun activity uh, that occurred, um, you know, ships crashing into bridges. Uh, but this one, again, very strange, and, and, and it seems to be taking hold. A lot of other uh, conspiracy researchers online are talking about, you know, how Israel is, you know, getting ready to do this with the, uh, with the cows, you know, these specific red cows. Uh, really weird, weird stuff all around this eclipse and in the month of April, you know. Uh, here's a web from their website, one of the websites there that I found what this is, is all about. Shabbat Parah, uh, something celebrating the uh, Jewish year of 5784. And it tells you what it's all about. Okay, in preparation of Passover, in the book of Numbers, uh, in the Jewish temple as part of a manner in which the Kalhum, Kalim, uh, and the Jewish people purify themselves so they would be ready, pure, to sacrifice the korban, pan, pan, panash, pan, pasha. I, I'm not even sure how you pronounce it. But anyway, um, so here we see very strange activities. And, of course, uh, Greg Reese does another fabulous job. Short video, five minutes. You want to check that out. I left the link down below. He goes a little bit more deeper into the weirdness going on with the ceremonies. But he also talks about CERN, which I will talk about. And speaking of cows, there is a sneaky, some sneakiness going on here where the Epic Times is reporting that a uh, controversial measure to include a $15 million for electronic tracking of livestock 
has been made it through Congress via recently passed Omnibus bill. Very interesting. Now, what did I say about six months ago, eight months ago? I said watch for things related to food, cows, uh, food production, food production plants. And of course, over the past year or two, we've seen quite a few uh, of these plants go down, being burned mysteriously. And now all of a sudden, there's this sudden interest in livestock tracking. Hmm. Interesting. Very suspicious in my opinion. Okay. Again, the governments are not here to protect its citizens. They are protecting the corporations. They are protecting them. And that's what they're supposed to be doing because they're part of the same system, the control mechanism. I hate to sound like a crazy conspiracy theorist, but these are facts. These are not theories anymore. We also had, listen to this, another incident with a uh, barge in, uh, where was it, Oklahoma. It hit, it hit the bottom of a uh, bridge there. This was very strange and weird, you know, to have uh, these two incidences uh, happen within a week or two of each other. I wonder if we're going to have more. As I said, I already said that we're going to look for issues around boats and ships and water and stuff like that, you know. And so here's another incident that uh, was, this was under the radar, but it was still significant enough to put up. And then we have this event taking place. NASA to fire three rockets at, on the same day as the solar eclipse. Does anyone else, uh, is anyone else scratching their heads, wondering, you know, sacrificing cows, uh, cow bills, uh, you know, um, things having to do with space, uh, a rocket, rockets being launched, um, a comet, a mysterious comet coming in out of nowhere. And, uh, you know, it's just very strange stuff. NASA to launch these. Now, I understand this is not the first time they've done this during an eclipse. All right, I'll give them that. But when you start piecing all these things together, you, you know, you got to wonder. You scratch your head going, what the hell is going on here? Now, this one is very concerning because this is very significant. This CERN to test world's most powerful particle accelerator during April's solar eclipse. Once again, another strange incident all about to happen on the 8th or around the 8th. Okay, so again, you know, if you're, if you're somebody with common sense... You're saying, what are they doing? What is this all about all on the same day or around the same day? If you understand the psychopaths that run this planet, friends, they are all about doing rituals on very important days. This is one of the most powerful eclipses of our lifetime. And it happens to be over the United States, the third one over the United States. They are either doing some form of ceremony or some sort of, you know, electromagnetic uh, influence, that's the best way I could put it, influence to get a certain outcome. That's all I could say, okay? But this one is very strange. So if you don't know what CERN is, many of you uh, new viewers uh, to the research, the spirit, conspiracy research uh, community, what is CERN? It is a 17-mile circular underground tube where they smash two um, particles together. It's called a, a large hydron collider. And they're at incredible speeds, you know, one going in one direction, one going in another, and they keep sending them at each other uh, to see what happens when they collide. Now, this, you know, on the surface sounds very interesting, very intriguing, very dangerous, okay? Uh, but I don't think this is what this thing is. I really don't. And my spidey senses tell me this is much more than we realize, okay? And so... If you understand where this thing is also located, this is also a concern. Uh, this is what it looks like, okay? For those of you who don't know what it actually looks like, giant cylindrical tube uh, that is forcing particles through it at very high rates of speed. And so, but notice where it is located, friends, in France and Switzerland. These two locations are completely under the control of the psychopaths that run this planet. Do you think they would allow something like this in here without them knowing about it, number one, and number two, paying for it? So whatever this thing is, it is associated with these structures, these power structures that run these countries, which is, again, I, I just use the word psychopaths because it's the best way to describe the people that run or the beings that run this planet. 
they're not in our they don't have our best interest and everything about them is not is very dark or can be very dark and so uh especially like i say I, to a lot of people when you go down this rabbit hole it gets pretty dark pretty fast and you realize oh my god something that's controlling this planet is doesn't have our best interest at heart let's put it that way and so this makes me very suspicious when you have something like this you know 17 miles under the ground under the under the ground i mean talk about the expense that was created to build this thing okay but it often reminds me of the movie from the i believe it was the late 80s or early 90s stargate I'm not, i don't know how many of you folks have, have watched it i think it was also turned into a series very important because <clears throat> Any time that they are going to do anything, and I mean the powers that shouldn't be, they always like to put it in our subconscious, and they usually do it through movies and, uh, you know, the media and anything to do with the, the public. And this was one of the movies. So this was very suspicious, highly suspicious. And then I go and discover on TikTok a video that somebody put together. I think it's about uh, a minute long or so, and I left the link down below. And this was fascinating because it's it's about 140 years uh, time you know time lapsed of all these discoveries all throughout the world that look like this giant collider or stargate, if you will. And I'm not saying they are, but they all look very similar, you know, all around the world. Very strange, uh, you know, events or strange uh, monuments of some kind. So again, you you judge for yourself, but. Also, uh, from space.com, uh, there's an article here, 10 ancient sites that might be stargates, portals, or wormholes. Hmm, interesting. It's like they're conditioning us. Like they, they're just spoon-feeding the public on what's real, what's not real. And so, again, you know, I, the Spidey sensors are going, what are they up to? What are they up to? Very strange things taking place here. Now, I came across this video, and then this guy, I, I've listened to him before. I, I forgot his name, but he has this um, End Times production on YouTube. Very interesting stuff. He's very biblical and, you know, a little Jesus-y, but that's okay. His information checks out. He's very good with his information, very well researched. I give, him, I give the man a lot of credit. So if you want to watch, what he's suspecting is very strange, very weird with all these rituals going on with CERN. I would totally agree. And he pieces it all together in a nice 16-minute video. So I left the link down below, or you could, uh, you know, take that title and put it in and check it out for yourself. But he does a great job of showing you the connection between CERN and these secret societies and all the symbolism. And uh, for those of us that are down the rabbit hole, we know that there's a connection somehow. I'm also reminded of that movie, The Avengers, the first one, where that opening scene, uh, deep down underground, um, there was a portal or some sort of energy field that opened up and allowed Loki to come through. Now we know in the, in the movies, Loki was not uh, exactly a nice person. And all throughout history, even in the mythologies, Loki was not a nice person. So again, we see symbolism here in a movie and what's taking place in this underground facility in between Switzerland and um, France. Again, it, it, it just raises suspicion. So what I have to say, this is very strange and odd, you know, and you can't get a you can't get anybody to say anything in these places, so you can't get any real information. There are a few interviews and articles that I came across a while ago. I can't re recall, but some of the scientists working on things there were talking a little bit more than just colliding two particles together. Let's put it that way. So again, raises my suspicions. Also, I cannot discount the fact that with the suspicion going on. Now, if you guys don't know what an electromagnetic pulse is, it's a, a burst of energy, okay? And with three rockets going into space, them turning on CERN, uh, all kinds of ritual activities taking place, are they trying to create something like this in the atmosphere, in the ionosphere? I don't know. And I don't get the feeling that it's going to happen, but Mercury is retrograde, and it's all about electricity. It's all about, you know, harnessing energy. And they seem to be spending a lot of time doing something with energy or portals or timelines, whatever you want to call it. And so I can't discount this over the next, uh, let's say, six months. Because I've already shown you the astrology. I've shown you what kind of energy we're dealing with here, especially as we go into July and August. Um, this sets the tone for all of that. 
and with Mercury retrograde and and some of these other things going on. It's a very strange time. So I'm not going to discount this either. So maybe we have a severe storm that, you know, is weird that comes out of nowhere because we have been having very strange weather lately, you know, and I've said this because the higher ionosphere has a lot of particles in there because it's allowing a lot more um, photon light coming in from space. And then, of course, whatever's going on with the uh, so-called uh, spraying that's taking place, the geoengineering, uh, they're putting more particles in the air. They're electrifying the atmosphere in some way, creating more moisture and um, guiding weather. So nothing is off the table in my eyes in terms of all this. And again, this is just information. These are all, you know, possibilities. And most of us are smart enough to realize that something weird is going on here. And so we have to talk about it only to uh, not not to create fear out of it, but to start realizing uh, what is really going on. So more and more people could wake up to it. So this is this is a possibility as well, especially the entire month going into May is this possibility of weird weather or strange power outages, cell phone towers, all of that stuff falls under this umbrella. So again, pay attention. That's all I'm saying. Pay attention. If your cell phone just craps out or your internet craps out in your neighborhood and then in your town, uh, you know, could be something. Keep an eye on it. You know, these things happen. I understand. But if they start happening on a larger scale, you need to pay attention. All right. So all through the internet. I mean, I'm seeing post after post about stuff like this. Really strange stuff going on uh, on the 8th. And uh, this person also put on uh, the experiment that they're conducting. Uh, with the three rockets, his name Apep is the name after the serpent deity from the ancient Egyptian mythology. Uh, listen again, it just seems very strange. And of course, the three sacrificing of heifers, uh, all at the same time, as, a, as if they're trying to lure something in. Very strange. But wait, there's more. When well, you think this upcoming election couldn't get any worse. But wait, there's more. And there is more, friends. I found this. The Washington criminal organization called this right here, Project Trump Nullification. Very interesting. This this article by Greg Webb, and I left the link down below. You might want to read it. He basically goes on to say, at the heart of the Washington criminal treaty is Article 5, which calls for the collect, collective defense between all criminal members nations. This means that if there is a national security threat to the United States, J.B. could invoke the Washington Criminal Project for the defense of the United States by invoking criminal forces based in Norfolk, Virginia, to take action to put down any insurrection. Do you see another reason why I say we might not have an election this fall? Okay, here is right off the article. You can go to their website that um, there's again, everything is building up to try and stop something or create something also with this election. So it's almost, and I've said this before, I think uh, they're desperate. I think we're in the end game where the powers that shouldn't be are going to throw everything at us. Fear, anger, pit us against each other. Uh, you know, try as much as they can to distract, destroy, and, 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 and piss people off. And so, friends, I just say, don't feed into the fears. Do not feed into the fears, okay? Uh, this is a chess game. This is a 5D-level chess game. We have to pay attention and don't feed into it. You just prepare the best you can. Stay in a neutral mindset or in a positive mindset. That's the best thing you could do, okay? Um, but let's go into the astrology because it's very important to show you what I see here as I'm doing this video uh, on the 3rd. And so we begin with the Mercury retrograde in Aries, right as we start off the month. So here is Mercury. Where is it? Right there. Mercury is retrograde at 27 degrees, and it will be backtracking all the way to about 15 before it goes direct on the 25th. So it'll keep going backwards uh, until, uh, you know, it hits the sun and the north node. And so this is confusion. This could be uncertain. This could be things from the past. This is all stuff that's resurfacing. And so we also, again, we still have those four planets in Pisces that we have to keep an eye on because uh, that's all about water. It's about dissolving. It's about spiritual matters, you know, things that may not be real. 
um, fantasy illusion, you know. And so this is what we're doing. We're all kind of uh, looking at the world and trying to figure things out with a lot of confusion. You know, some of us could tune in a little easier. You know, some of us go off the deep end. Oh my God, the sky is falling kind of thing. Um, but, you know, it's with Mercury retrograde, this is going to add a lot more confusion into the mix this month. And so whatever occurs or doesn't occur, pay attention. So listen to your intuition, okay? Uh, let's put this in the United States' chart once again because the United States is the target of this eclipse. Here is the Mercury retrograde. So once again, very important because Mercury, 27 degrees, is going to be squaring Mercury of the United States in Cancer, another water sign. It's in the fourth house. It will stay in the fourth house, which means the home, homeland, things happening in the United States, possibly pertaining to water, water supply, water issues. Now, a square, square Mercury, square, um, you know, square Mercury, Mercury, square Mercury could be telecommunication issues, could be Internet issues, could be electronics because Mercury rules all that stuff. So I'm going to say to you this entire month with Mercury in retrograde, as it retrogrades here, and it'll just touch upon the, the sun in a retrograde because this will be moving backwards to 15. So it'll be close towards the end, squaring the sun of the United States. So once again, something going on in the United States here having to do with bodies of water, land, emotions, uh, people getting angry, frustrated, upset uh, for whatever reason. And so this could be the large cities. Anything along that path, the total uh, solar eclipse path, absolutely could affect that region because of these eclipses, you know, uh, especially the, the, th the other two we already had. So very strange times indeed with regards to uh, the, the Mercury retrograde, squaring Mercury retrograde. So very important to pay attention. Also, we have the four, flat, four planets in water there too. Now, Venus enters Aries on the 5th. Now we're starting to boil a little bit more because now Venus is no longer in uh, Pisces, which is all soft and sweet and gentle. Now it's in fiery Aries. I want some, you know, get up and go. I got to go do, and I want this now. And so now we're starting to see a little bit more fire, uh, you know, coming into the picture. We may also see things pertaining to fire. Uh, like I showed you that carnival cruise catching fire in the Bahamas. There could be more issues with fire, you know, fire in the um, uh, meat packing plants, fire around uh, places near water, you know, that have facilities near water. Keep an eye on that. And I'll do my best to try and get your stories to, to, to show you what I was talking about. But this all pertains to that as well, too. So Venus is starting to heat things up now because Venus is going to get closer and closer to the sun. Uh, you know, it's moving in, in the same proximity. And eventually, Mercury and Venus will also be at the same degree. So, amp amping up that energy even more. In the United States' chart, Venus is still in the third house of communication. It will enter the fourth house. Once again, things having to do with the home, the homeland, the foundation, the country. Uh, could have something to do with Washington and the Northeast because these are the original estates in the country, you know, the original 13 colonies. So this is the foundation. This is also the history. The fourth house has to do with the sort of the childhood of the beginnings of, of, of a country. So we may see something or uh, stuff in the Northeast that could be very important. You know, I said, watch Niagara Falls, because that could be an issue over there with water. But something to do with water, strange weather, uh, unusual weather. This is all possible with now Venus entering Aries going into the fourth house. Now, the transiting moon alignment is very interesting stuff because oftentimes in astrology, the moon becomes the trigger. It's kind of like um, the igniter, if you will. Okay, so here we have on the sixth, we have the moon in Pisces and it's conjunct Mer uh, Mars, the warrior planet. So look for events once again, fourth, fifth, and sixth. That could be very significant around water, water issues, emotions, feelings, things having to do with religion and beliefs. That all falls under the Pisces umbrella as well. There could be people that, I hate to say it, but you know, are assassinated or die around this time frame as well um, because of the moon you know, going through uh, this alignment. Now, both Mars and Saturn both represent men or older men. One represents male, the male energy. The other one is older men. Uh, so there could be some major conflicts that occur here with 
uh, prominent people, uh, you know, either in uh, Hollywood or in the public in some way, politicians, uh, big government, uh, you know, uh, CEOs. It, it could be any of that stuff. So keep an eye on all of that, which, again, is very fishy and suspicious. And let's see what happens. In the United States' chart here, the transiting moon, once again, in the third house of communication. So watch for important news to come out of um, this just this time frame alone, between the 4th, 5th, and 6th, relating to the government. Water, oil, let's not forget oil. Oil also falls under this umbrella as well. Uh, anything that flows, you know. And so we have Saturn there. So there could be some oil issues, uh, oil tankers. Uh, you know, fires on oil tankers. Uh, I mean, that wouldn't surprise me either under these alignments. So we'll see what that means. Battleships. We could see, you know, stuff like that going on as well. Um, you know, like battleships being attacked or battleships at sea attacking something else. That is a possibility as well. So let's see what happens. Uh, transiting moon on the 7th. Now things really start to heat up because now the moon has left Pisces, which is, uh, is often a little bit more gentler goes into the fiery realms of Aries. Aries is impulsive, it is action-oriented, and right away it's going to be mean, meeting up with Venus. And so once again, partnerships, uh, talk of war, uh, conflict, military, military nonsense going on. Uh, it could be the United States, possibly, because I, I'll show you in the, in the United States' chart, it's going to be active. But this is, again, another big igniter. And the moon will, over the next two days, continue to make its way towards, obviously, the sun on the 8th, at where it's at the same degree. And the energy is very strong. So, again, we're seeing a lot of buildup up to this solar eclipse. Here it is in the United States' chart. The moon is going to enter the fourth house. People are getting excited. Uh, you know, tempers are flaring. Uh, there's a lot of uh, friction uh, and again, this could be just in the major cities, because that's where a lot of folks, unfortunately, uh, find themselves frustrated with life and, um, you know, they decide they need to blow off steam of some kind. But keep an eye on all this. The energy is building, building, building. That's what it seems to seems to be going on here. And with uh, the moon in Aries, it's 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 a wild card because the moon, as you could see here, Venus is already squaring Venus and is going to be squaring Jupiter. That's a difficult alignment in astrology. Then we have the moon that's also coming by here to trigger Venus, also trigger Venus up here, then trigger Jupiter over here. So I would say the day before, the 7th, this could be a very tricky uh, time for uh, an event. And by the way, I'm going to be holding my first live stream on YouTube on the 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And I will. I have a slide at the end to remind you, but um, please make a note of it on your calendar. And the reason I'm doing this is because, and I'm calling it um, uh, Raise the Vibration live stream. Okay? Because we're, those of us in the spiritual community that know what's going on are tired of this nonsense with fear and people worrying. And, and, and you know, it's a constant battle between understanding who you are and keeping your vibration up and people that just want to live in fear and believe the nonsense that's going on out there. So I've decided, me and my team have decided to put together a live stream on YouTube. And I hope you join us. Uh, it's totally free. Um, and so the more the merrier. Uh, there'll be a link uh, down below. Uh, and I'm going to set up a, a notify me um, when, I, when I upload this video. But this is going to be very important, and I want to counter all of this energy that's coming in. Believe it or not, the more people participate, the higher the vibration we could, we could get to keep everything more at peace, more of a higher frequency, no fear, no fear. So that's what I'm going to be talking about and uh, reiterating what I see here. And we'll see what happens over these next couple of days leading up to the 7th. Now, the solar eclipse, as I've mentioned in the last video, very powerful right there. But it has Chiron in the mix. This is about healing. This is another reason why I'm doing that live stream on the 7th is basically to raise the vibration, to help healing, to help sort of people understand who they are. And I will be talking about things uh, about spiritual matters and who we really are and uh, how the world really works. And, uh, I, and I hope uh, it reaches many of you and you could join us. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be important to understand this. And uh, the solar eclipse is activating the Pisces energy, which is about spirit. That's also why I'm doing it. But of course, as I've said before, Mars is in a weakened position in Pisces. 
So this is a weird time for uh, anything to do with motivation or, um, you know, with things pertaining to direction. But that's why I, I'm participating and doing my best to um, help people out and understand what's happening. So in the United States, this chart, as you know, it's the fourth house, the home, the home life, real estate matters. Um, you know, if, I, if, if I'm correct, and I hope I'm not with that uh, NATO nonsense, uh, that bill I showed you that they were preparing for, this would fit the bill of military troops on the United States' soil. But that said, before the election, remember, eclipses take up to six months to a year to manifest. So this fits perfectly in the timeline that I'm seeing things. And so this is going to sort of start a chain reaction, as I said, in the third month, the sixth month. And six months from now is election season. So we may see, you know, blue helmets in the United States or some other force in the United States. And again, I hope I'm wrong. And, uh, but there is that possibility because, uh, you know, the United States is going through a massive change and the powers that shouldn't be don't want to, you know, uh, let go of the United States. We're like the golden goose of the world. You know, we produce and, you know, we, we uh, create and, um, you know, we stay ignorant. Uh, those of us that don't pay attention and uh, feed into all the fears. And so they love that. Remember, they love fear. They love controlling people through fear. So um, this is a possibility here with this eclipse sort of igniting something really weird and strange uh, that manifests itself six months down the line. Now, on the 10th, the transiting moon enters Taurus, sandwiched right near or around or between uh, the Jupiter and Uranus. So again, this is again having to do with uh, cows, like they're doing with the meat and uh, the, the ceremony in Israel. Um, but the moon also, again, is amplifying this energy. And so again, I'm seeing some really strange stuff happening even after the eclipse that we need to pay attention to. Remember, Mercury is retrograde, so it can be confusing or something from the past that resurfaces. And Mercury and the sun are co being closely conjunct here. They will be in a day or two from this time frame. So anything to do with this entire week is amplified even more. Uh, could be money, could be values, you know, what, what our belief systems are. Could be food production, food production plants. All of that stuff fits into play. Power plays, you know, like I said, people uh, battling, uh, power brokers, um, people in public. All of that stuff is playing into all of this, even with this transiting moon in Taurus. And as we see here, that moon is going to be in the fifth house. So something new may be developing or something from the past that's coming through, maybe a major announcement, something to do with currency, the crypto markets. That's all a possibility as well. You know, they may go to new highs. Bitcoin may hit a new high at this time. So there is that possibility. But we see here Venus is still squaring Jupiter and heading for a square with uh, the sun. And so, again, very confusing Mars, excuse me, Mercury is still uh, squaring Mercury in the uh, natal chart. Could have something to do with money matters as well or hidden information that comes to light. Fourth house, feelings, emotions, foundation, real estate, land, um, you know, and it's all Aries. Aries energy is still pretty strong at this time. Sun is still in, in Aries. Uh, Venus is still in Aries. And so we're seeing a lot of Aries Taurus energy, which is usually motivation and drive and determination. And so we may see some you know, feistiness taking place here around this time, even after the eclipse. So we'll see. Here's the live stream picture <laughs> as a reminder, calling this Raise the Vibration, Sunday the 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, join me here. I will have this live stream. I'm expecting a lot of people. Uh, you'll be able to, you know, ask some questions in the comments, and I'm just going to share probably about 45 minutes to an hour of talking and, and uh, you know, gathering some thoughts and, and sharing some inspiration. That's you know, what I'm here to do and many others like me. And so if you could join us and help to raise the vibration, fantastic. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, also, thank you. Where You guys are blowing up my school community. I mean, I think we're at 2,000 members already and it just keeps growing. And so, um, you know, I, I'm grateful to all of you that have joined so far and um, I keep putting up information up there and you know, people are interacting and asking questions and, you know, there's there's all kinds of stuff up there. So check it out. Link down below uh, if you're interested. And of course, uh, this is the big message. Always remember, we are 
beings of light, of energy. The particles in our cells are made up of the source. You, you call it whatever you want, but that's who we are. At the subatomic level, we seem to be some sort of light vibrating. Our, all of our cells are vibrating in unison together. It's like, it's like watching a bunch of drones all come together in the sky and then, you know, at night and then they all start lighting up. That's what we are. We have all these tiny photon uh, cells and particles in our body that are all working in unison and they're lighting us up. So we are spiritual beings of light, of the light. Okay, that's who we are. Always remember that folks. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it and uh, stay well and I will see you guys on Sunday. All right. Take care. Bye for now.